you are Locked On Razorbacks, your daily podcast on the Arkansas Razorbacks, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome into the Locked On Razor Racks podcast. I am your host, John Neighbors. I am also the host of Out of Bounds. You can catch every weekday afternoon from 1 to 4 on 103.7 The Buzz and 1037thebuzz.com. Uh, hope everybody's having a wonderful Sunday or a wonderful Monday, depending on uh, how you are listening to this or if you're live streaming it. Uh, just It's a Razorback devotional where we come to you talking about words of encouragement or in some cases, like today, will be a little bit of fire and brimstone from Arkansas's loss to Texas A&M. So again, if you are watching on YouTube, be sure to hit that subscribe button. Appreciate all of you watching and listening in. And uh, we're going to have uh, more of the podcast throughout the week, but appreciate all of you being a part of it too, because there's a lot of things to get to. So I'll start off with my reaction. We'll get into your reactions too. What an absolute mess. What an absolute mess. Arkansas loses 34 to 22 to Arkansas uh, to Texas A&M. And honestly, that final score isn't really even a good indication of just how bad this game was. I was there in Arlington. I knew how the result was going to be. I knew how Arkansas had found ways to lose this game and, and various different times. I know that it's basically one of those things to where you can be hopeful. You can maybe think that this is going to change. You can maybe think that, no, this game's going to be different. But I didn't. I had I went into the game thinking Arkansas was going to lose. You can call that a defeatist attitude, but when you have lost now 11 out of 12 games against Texas A&M, and you've only won one of these games in Arlington since 2011, uh, since the Obama administration, then, yeah, it's things start to really add up as far as why you think your Arkansas Razorbacks are going to lose this game when I did. But what I did not expect is the complete and total incompetence of all the good faith and all the good things that maybe Arkansas had been doing, which they hadn't done a whole lot. But at least throughout the first four games of the season, there were things that you could point to and say, hey, this is at least good. This can be worked on. These things can be fixed, as we talked about, fixable issues. I thought that at least because of that fact, you would be able to see at least a little bit more of a competent game plan put into place against Texas A&M, who is a good team, not a great team, not a championship team, but a good team. I honestly thought that Arkansas, this would probably be the way it would be in so many other different Texas A&M games, would be a one-score game, and that's not what happened. From the get-go, Arkansas just... It, it got bad from the very beginning. And again, we'll talk, try to get as many details as I can in here. But obviously, Luke has having a, a broken clavicle and being out for the season sucks. I hate that for him. And I, I hate that for Arkansas because you saw against LSU just how good he was and, and what he could be. And so I hate that for the young man. And hopefully he can have a full recovery and be back next season at full health. But the rest of this game, I have no idea what this was. I have no idea what I was watching. I saw a team offensively especially, because that's where my main problem lies, offensively especially, look totally and completely lost against a Texas A&M team that, again, has a good defense, but completely and totally look outmatched, outgunned, out everything, from outcoached, outprepared, everything. Everything. Arkansas didn't even get off to a good start in this one. A&M got, their, got the game going early. Arkansas at least was, was flirting with it a little bit, but you're telling me that you, as a team and as an offense, finish with a total of 174 yards of offense. 174 yards of offense. Which, by the way, one of the final plays for Arkansas offensively was with less than four minutes to go, a 48-yard touch touchdown pass from K.J. Jefferson to Andrew Armstrong. And so you took that play away. Arkansas essentially went... 56 minutes of this game with about 100 and what 30, 125 yards or less. Pathetic. I mean, it was it was pathetic. You had a pathetic offense that the offensive line struggled once again. And I know that there's a lot of blame to go around for this, but the offensive line got whipped, plain and simple. It was an embarrassing effort by the offensive line. They got whipped. And on top of that, you had K.J. Jefferson running for his life so many times, or at least attempting to run for his life so many times, 
And I really have a hard time, you know, blaming KJ for a lot of this game just because he didn't have the time to do the things that he was supposed to do. You had 15 tackles for loss. 15 tackles for loss in this game. 15. one five tackles for loss in this game. You lost over 100 yards of offense. You got sacked. You got stopped behind the line of scrimmage. You looked as about as horrible as a Razorback football team has had with as much talent as you do in a game against Texas A&M that it needed to be win. Well, it needed to be won. It needed to be a game you needed to win. Plain and simple. And that was the effort that you put forth. That was the effort that you decided to say, you know what? And when our backs are against the wall, when we got to have this game, it's on a neutral field. It's against an A&M team that we want revenge against from last year. That is the effort that you give. That is the performance you come up with. Zero excuse for it. Zero excuse for it. I, I mean, there, there's so many mind-blowing things that happen in this game. Like, Arkansas didn't get penalized once. How do you go from being, you know, like, what was it? 14 penalties to 11 penalties to zero penalties. And the defense, you know, has its issues. But if I would have told you before the game started that Arkansas was going to have a pick six in this game and have zero penalty yards and um, even have like a fumble recovery, like those things, like feeling good about it. Like, I mean, yeah, I love the chances that Arkansas ends up taking care of business or at least being in the game at the end. But it, that wasn't the case at all. Wasn't the case at all. You had some weird drop passes. You had... Like, again, I'm, I know everyone's got their own thing about what they want to take on and, and what they want to discuss. But to me, the most egregious thing was that it, you got stopped right before halftime on fourth and short in your own territory because you ran shotgun. Okay? You ran shotgun. I don't understand how you can constantly have this happen over and over and over again where you get stopped short at, ha at, at on shotgun formations. It's happened multiple times this year. You've yet to convert one time, and yet you don't try anything different. You don't try anything different. I don't understand how you can have KJ Jefferson at quarterback and have an SEC caliber offensive line that you presume, that you have all that where it's been said time and time again by the amount of Pros, NFL players, coaches, that the most difficult play to stop in all of football is the quarterback sneak under center. And you just refuse to do it. Is it out of spite? Is it out of spite? You know, I hear this. Well, they got the, you know, the bear defense up front. You're going to do it. Folks, if they're, here's the thing. If you don't have a center or guards or whatever, an offensive line in front of you and a quarterback that can take the ball under center and move forward a yard, then they don't need to be out there. They don't need to be playing. If it is that bad where you can't trust your own guys to go out there and get half a yard or a yard when you go for it on fourth down, they don't need to play or you don't need to be coaching or something like that. You know, I tried to give the benefit of the doubt when the beginning was going on with those plays because I'm like, hey, sometimes it's about execution. Sometimes it's about what you're comfortable with. Sometimes it's about this, that, and the other. But here's the thing. We all in life, you know what we do when we have problems with one occurring, over occurring issue time and time and time and time again? We change it. Why? Because we want it to get fixed. And in a crucial moment in this game, you decided to go for it. When you do go for it, you, you just lose it. Changes the game. You never recovered. And for whatever reason, you just decide that you do not want to use one of the biggest, most built quarterbacks in the SEC, if not the country, under center, and trust him in his center to get a half a yard. Like, what, what world are we living in here? The amount of times that, like, against LSU, I thought it was a great game plan for the most part. A great game plan going up against LSU because you knew that the defensive line was going to get after KJ. Like, because your offensive line had been struggling. So what did you do? You rolled out KJ a lot more. You got the ball out quicker. Like, you had a game plan against a really good defensive front to be able to adjust. And for some reason against AM, who has a good defensive front, a good defensive line, you just threw that out of the window and you had KJ back there taking forever to throw the ball or having slow developing plays and it ended up costing you. 
time and time again. You had the, the play when you were on the goal line where it was third and goal and you are third and short or whatever it was. I think the first down marker was at the one. But either way, in the first half, you have a the most delayed handoff I've ever seen, and it gets stuffed to Rocket Sanders, who was healthy and looked good, at least on a few plays. I, I start to want to pull my hair out because it's one thing. Again, it's one thing if you're struggling with something or you're trying to figure out how to do something. Like It's one thing if you keep trying to figure out how to do that. But when this is the type of game that you perform, when you know you have your weaknesses, like we all know what the weaknesses are. You've seen them. I've seen them. The American people have seen them. We all know what the weaknesses are. But unless you change, unless you adjust, unless you do something to try to fix the problem, then you're, these are the results you're going to get. Texas A&M, give them credit. They came in ready. They came in ready. They were more prepared. And Arkansas got completely and totally outclassed and outcoached. And it, and it sucks. Because, you know, I'm usually like, I don't mind looking like an idiot because I always look like an idiot. I'm, that's my life. That's my job. But it really makes me feel stupid when I consider I con continue to try to say, okay, let's see how this plays out. I was, I was being patient. Some of you already jumped ship earlier, and if you want to sit there and crow, that's fine. I don't care. We all have opinions. But I wanted to see how it played out because I'm like, hey, maybe this can develop. Maybe they can find ways. Maybe they can adjust. But when you don't adjust, when you don't do the things that you're supposed to do to win games and have the killer instinct to go out there and make the plays that you need to make and you put forth an effort like that, I'm – I'm done. Like, I'm done with you. If that's the, if that's what you're going to do, if that's the performance you're going to put forward, then I'm done. Why, why are we doing this? Why are we going down to Arlington? Why are we going to these games? Why, with this amount of talent that you have at Arkansas, why is this the case? It, uh, that, I think, is the most disgusting thing I think I can think of about this whole situation with this season is that you can call it whatever you want. Arkansas has 100% enough talent to be an eight-win team this year. They have the talent. We've seen the talent. We've seen what these wide receivers can do. We've seen what K.J. Jefferson can do. We've seen what Rocket Sanders can do. We've seen what this defensive line can be capable of and the secondary, what they can be capable of. Like, we've seen it. But for whatever reason, they can't put it together. They can't figure it out. And then you go out on the field and you just completely and totally look incompetent like i'm sorry this is year four this was supposed to be the year you get back to business you get back to being on the right track and on the right path you had nine wins two years ago you took a step back last season that was extremely disappointing which we all agree but you made the changes and you did the adjustments in the offseason to make this team better and folks i don't know if this team's better in fact I would even argue they're worse, but not because of talent, not because of talent, but because what it looks like to me is you got everyone on different pages. You have, a, you have an offense under Dan Enos, which I was very much applauding Dan Enos and what he was able to come and bring in. I very much so was all about uh, the, the offense and the development that he could have at the quarterback position. But I also assumed, and you know what assuming does, but I also assumed that you would have an offensive coordinator and an offense in general that would adjust to strengths. That's what an offensive coordinator should do. I understand you want to run your system. I understand you want to run the plays and the format that you want to do it. But I also want to assume that you can go in and say, like, okay, well, this is my first year. I got a great athlete and a great dude, a quarterback who's got experience. I got a, a solid running back and Rocket Sanders. I got some new wide receivers. I have a lot of talent. They're experienced dudes. Uh, I have a freshman tight end. And my offensive line is really new. It doesn't look as good. But, okay, here's what I got. Let's put it together. Let's make a cake and let's see what comes out on the other side. But instead, it's just this same crap. It's this same crap. And, it, and I know, again, we're going to get to your comments, folks. I know we're going to get to your comments. So keep those coming. Uh, I'll, I'll just say this because I went on even longer than what I wanted to. So because I went on a rant. Um, but here's, here's what it comes down to for me. Here's what comes down to two for me. I don't mind. I'll let me rephrase it. I accept losing if it's because the other team's better. But I get the feeling that there, if there were other coaches that were coaching Arkansas right now with this team and this roster, that Arkansas would be 5-0. and And that's when I start to lose hope. When I start looking at the other coaches in this conference, and I'm like, yeah, if this coach was the guy, they'd probably be 5-0. and Or if this coach is the guy, this guy would be 5-0. and Like, when I get to that point, that's when I start jumping ship. Now, I will make this very clear. I am not calling for Sam Pittman's head right now. 
I'm not. If you want to do it, that's fine. I understand it. I'm not going to stop you. I'm not calling for Sam Pittman's head right now because the man deserves to finish out the season. The man deserves a lot of credit for some of the things that he has done. There's no question. But the way this is looking right now, I don't see Arkansas making a bowl game. I, if this is the way that they're going to play, I don't see him making a bowl game. And if they don't make a bowl game, I said it before the season, if they don't make a bowl game, then there needs to be a change. That's where I'm at right now. I hate to admit it. I like Sam Pittman. I've always liked Sam Pittman. I love the type of thing that he brings to Arkansas. I love his passion and love for Arkansas. But at the end of the day, it's about wins and losses. And in year four, if this is the product that you're putting out on the field with a team that is better than this and has more talent than this, then I don't, I, I don't want to hear it. I don't want to hear it. So I'm just, ugh. I'm done. I'm done with my rant. We'll get to all of your folks' comments because there's a lot of them uh, here in just a second. But first, folks, I know that there are not many great plays to talk about in this game, but we have to get to the Athletic Brewing Game Changer of the Week. Uh, brought to you by the Athletic Brewing Company. And since there's not really many highlights from Arkansas in this game and, and the way that they played, I will give a shout-out to Cam Little. You know why? Because Cam Little did his job. Cam Little did his thing for Arkansas. My man over here had a rough go against Ar uh, Texas a and last year, but he kicked three field goals, went three for three for 52 yards, 25 yards, and 50 yards. And every one of his kickoffs went to the, to the back of the end zone. So, yeah, I'm giving him a lot of credit for that. That's my... Game uh, game changer of the week for Athletic Brewing, and it's a company that has completely changed the non-alcoholic beer game, and they are fit for all time. So you can find Athletic Brewing Company's non-alcoholic brew at stores near you, or buy online at athleticbrewing.com. First-time customers use promo code Locked On, and you get fifteen percent off your first order. That's L O C K E D O N at checkout for fifteen percent off athleticbrewing.com. Near beer exclusion and conditions do apply. Athletic Brewing Company fit for all times. You are Locked On Razorbacks, your daily podcast on the Arkansas Razorbacks, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. All right, so moving on to the uh, next segment of the Locked On Razorbacks podcast. I know it went long on the rant, but I'm going to get to all of your comments here on the live stream. So uh, anything you want me to react to, I can't, I'll try to react to as much as I can or get my thoughts on it uh, as much as I can. Uh, but uh, we got a lot of people watching, which is awesome. So once again, thank you all for watching. Uh, for the Razorback devotional, and be sure to subscribe to the YouTube page here for Locked on Razorbacks. All right, let's go ahead and start with Steve. Steve says, isn't Pittman the offensive line guru? Didn't he hire a strength coach last year because we weren't very strong? Yes, that's that's disappointing. And again, it's like I don't I don't know if they could go under center and, and get the fourth down in short situation because they don't do it. They don't do it. I saw LSU do it against Ole Miss, which was a wild game, mind you. So LSU do it on, against Ole Miss with Jaden Daniels on the goal line. And guess what? Stop traffic. It worked. It worked. Maybe try it. Give it a shot. Because if the other team stops you when it's fourth and short because you try to QB sneak and they got it, hey, heck of a play by the defense. I'll chalk it up to that. But running this shotgun nonsense makes me just want to punch my – face as hard as I can and then put in boiling water. I, it just, it, it infuriates me. Charles says, think about it. If he goes four and eight and doesn't fire him, it's not a smart business move. Ticket sales will suck next season. He will lose the fan base. I'm assuming you're Charles. You're talking about Hunter Yurichek. Um, it, yeah, they got, that's the problem that Hunter Yurichek finds stuff in. This was a pivotal year for Arkansas because you got Texas and Oklahoma joining the SEC next year. We got all, all the changes coming to college football next season. You have a home schedule that is extremely, extremely difficult with Ole Miss, LSU, Texas, and Tennessee. This is why this year with K.J. Jefferson, with Rocket Sanders, with the adjustments you've made as defense and all that, with, this was the year you had to make that step forward. Because if you don't go to a bowl game this season, who's going to be excited about next year if you go 4-8 and eight or 5-7 and seven this season and you lose the good players that you do have? Like, who's going to be pumped? Like, nobody. Nobody's going to be excited. And you're going to be picked to finish dead last in the SEC or at least uh, close to it. And so that, that's a problem. That's a problem. My bad. Adventure says, do you find that when we lose, there are less view than the same amount of views or more views? I'm listening now because of a specific subject. It's just how I felt since game one. Uh, actually, you know what's funny is I had 
a ton of watchers live uh, against BYU, and I had a few a good a good amount against LSU, and then this one's blowing it all out of the water. So three straight losses have been up and down, but I think this one's the one that people are most upset about. Uh, Matt says the Philly sneak. Yeah, that's where I was at. Like, where's that? Where's that? Bo says. I still love Sam, but I'm really tired of hearing the same thing every week. We have a lot to work on. At what point do we see the results? No, I'm with you. I'm with you. It's year four. It's year four. You have an experienced quarterback. You have an experienced running back. You have a defense that's improved from last season. I, I, no, there's nothing you need to work on. That's what the offseason's about. This is as healthy of an Arkansas team. I know that they lost Luke has, but this is as healthy as an Arkansas team has been this year. This past game was. So don't you can't blame it on injuries like you could before. Perfect Storm says seeing fourth and one from the shotgun gives me anxiety as Browse is running a draw on first down and Chad is sweeping with Hammonds. Yeah, like man, like everybody that was so hard on Kendall Bryles. I mean, and I was one of those ones that defended him till the very end. I liked Kendall Bryles. I still like Kendall Bryles. I didn't like his decisions at times. And I even like Dan Eno. So I'm like, okay, this is a good thing, but and this is the product that we're getting. I'm, 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 I'm not, not a fan of it. Say what you want about Kendall Bryles, but the offense worked. It got points. It got yards. It got production. So Steve says, guys, it's not the plays, the plays that are calls. It's the Jimmys and Joes, not the X's and O's. Yeah, no, I don't buy that, man. Steve, I get, I know that's the thing. And obviously you want to have as much talent as you do, but Arkansas has enough talent to make this offense work. They have enough talent. I'm not saying they have to get they go 12 and 0 with this talent, but they have enough talent. I don't I don't take that excuse. Phil says uh, KJ having to think pre snap way too much, and you know, slow developing plays will for will never work with the offensive line. Can't stop anybody. Yeah, that's what I'm going with. So I'm going with like you can't expect like you, if you come into this situation, you have to expect that you adjust to what you have. Look to your strengths, look to your weaknesses, and do it. And it doesn't. It's not the case. And it's game four. Like, I don't understand why you want running the similar game plans you get against LSU. That was effective. Arkansas got points. They scored. Where was that game plan? Why don't you run something similar like that? Bot Magnet says, nobody wants to coach in Arkansas and SEC. It's a death sentence. Yeah, I bet. I'm sure it is. There are plenty of people that would love to coach in SEC school and plenty of people that would love to coach Arkansas. I mean, uh, that's, 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 I mean, I don't even know if you're a Razorback fan, Bot Magnet. I don't even know if you're real. You're a bot and you're a magnet, apparently. So uh, let's see. Uh, Jesus Cole says, We are quite literally making the game harder for ourselves while stabbing ourselves in the floor or in the four in the foot. Yeah. No, I know. That's the problem. It's like you're doing it yourselves. You're doing it yourselves. You're doing it yourselves. It's a problem. Soggy says, You could have Steve Enz, Enz Is that how you say his name? Yeah. Joe Burrow and Joe Burrow on our roster and staff today. And it literally won't make any difference because you won't be able to throw the ball because of Cody Kennedy's offensive line. Yeah. No, the offensive line's been bad. But I don't think it's just, oh, an offensive line problem. I think it's, again, it goes to the offensive setup where, listen, there's been times Arkansas has not had great offensive lines or at least average offensive lines, and they adjusted. That's the problem. They're looking worse because you're setting them up for failure. Steve-O says, is it a KJ problem or an Enos problem? Uh, I think it's more of an Enos. I do. Uh, I, I mean, again, I, I like Enos and I have liked Enos, but this ain't it. I don't blame KJ. KJ's doing all he can. But it doesn't matter if you're having to go back into the pocket and wait for these slow developing plays and then you get hit. It's as simple as that. Charles says, we can get good coaches. People stop making excuses. We are so used to being mediocre BS that's stuck in that mindset. No way good will want the job. Yeah, I don't buy that crap. Like anybody that says that it, it, to me is just dumb. It's dumb. Like, you, you can say whatever it is that you want to say about whatever, about Arkansas, and I'm not even trying to make an argument that they're one of the best teams in the SEC when it comes to coaching jobs. But this idea that it's just this, like, trash football program is nonsense. It's nonsense. Arkansas can be just as good, if not better, of a football program than a lot of the teams in the SEC with the right coach because they've proven it many times. Uh, you know, you look at what Kentucky's doing with Mark Stoops. Like, I don't see any reason why Arkansas can't be as good of Ole Miss or better. You know, same thing with Mississippi State. Uh, same thing with South Carolina. 
again, I'm not saying that they will be better every single year or anything like that, but to act like Arkansas is just the bottom of the barrel and like them and Vanderbilt is, is, is just wrong. Like it's just, it's a loser mentality that you can't accept. And if you, and if that's what you accept then go find another team to root for. Vince says we'll lose a lot of players to the portal after the season. They're back to rebuilding again. Depends on what happens this off season. I mean, if their coaching change happens, it can be a blessing or it could be a curse when it comes to the transfer portal. Uh, let's see. Jonathan says, Pittman is an example of that. A guy who has never been head coach had more success than Morris, but hiring a guy who's never been a head coach wasn't a good long-term solution for this program. I mean, I get it. It's not looking that way. It's not looking that way. Like, I, I again, I've li I really like Sam Pittman. I really loved Sam Pittman when he got hired. I said two weeks before he got hired, I wanted Sam Pittman because – Arkansas was just so down in the dumps completely that they at least needed someone who loved the program enough and had had success in the SEC and was very well respected in recruiting and all of that to try to get it going. And, and Sam Pittman did that. He did that. He re-sparked it. I mean, the guy went nine, had nine wins in, his, in year two. Like you, you can say it's because whatever, but I don't care. Like If you get nine wins, if you go nine and four in the SEC West, it's a great year. And coaching has a lot to do with that. And Steven says, John, thanks to, for my new pregame prayer. You're welcome. It's all about the devotional, people. It's all about the devotional. Nico says, uh, why does he want to throw it so bad if the O-line can't block? That's the case where the quick slants. Exactly. That's my, that's my point. If you want to, like they, I feel like they just ran. It was so vanilla at times. I felt like they ran the ball on first and second down, and Rocket was never in. And then on third down was like third and eight. They ended up like bringing Rocket in and it didn't work. It's like, what are we doing here? That's the stuff that I just, I, I wish I had answers for. I wish I could just sit here and be like, oh, okay, this is why. But I'm out of answers. I'm out of answers. I, I just don't understand. Like, and I'm a guy that played college football. I've watched a lot of college football, but I'm not someone who's just this mastermind of how it should work. But I'd like to think I know what works and what doesn't. And I'd like to think that if I was an offensive coordinator and my offense had some weaknesses that I try to avoid having those weaknesses exploited by adjusting. That's my thing. Vent says, uh, Arkansas doesn't have the caliber of players for types of system they want to run. We have to get back to being running back you. I don't disagree. I mean, I think that this team should have been based more on the running game, but you're not doing what you're supposed to be doing. Thomas says, do you think this, do you think Sam Pittman's seat is pretty hot right now? I do. I do. I do. I think, I think it's hot. Now, I don't know the level of it. Again, I'm not saying he should be fired right now. Like that's he deserves to finish out the year and he deserves to try to figure out a way to fix this in the middle of the year. Like he deserves that. I'm not saying they will. Like I know it's like a dad gum near impossible, but he deserves that much. But I'm sorry, you can't go from if they don't make a bowl game this year, you cannot go. From nine and four to seven and six to five and seven with KJ Jefferson as your starting quarterback. You just can't do it. Cannot do it. Let's see. Uh, Arky says, How about bringing Barry Lunny back as offensive coordinator? I mean, I like Barry Lunny, but I mean, has he done anything in Illinois to make you think that's going to be a, a vast improvement? I don't know. Chase says, uh, Draft class is pretty loaded. Would be cool to see KJ stay another year, whether it's on the Hill or elsewhere. Well, hopefully it's not elsewhere. But I was talking about that with a buddy. I was like, man, I'm not saying KJ would or would want to. He may leave, but if he wants to come back, he does have another year. He does have another year. So there's that you can look forward to, possibly. Uh, Fishman says, everyone likes the man, Sam Pittman, but his coaching really blows. See, I, I don't know if I'll say just in general his coaching. I think he has a lot of weaknesses as a coach because I think there's a lot of things he does do well. I think his... Uh, Getting guys to play for him is very commendable and very tough to do. I think his recruiting has been really good. I think his portal work has been really good. Um, I think I think that there's been a lot of things. Even his coaching hires, for the most part, have been good. Like they've been good ones, and then if not, he makes changes. So I think that he's had some really good things. But the problem is, is like how sustainable is it, or how long term is it? I I just feel like this team. I feel like this team has had the the fire. Missing. Like, I think the fire, you need a killer instinct. If you want to be a great team, you got to have a killer instinct where it's like fourth and short. All right. 
screw you, I'm going to get this yard and I'm going to insult your mother when I get done doing it. That's how I am. But they don't have that. They don't have that. Todd says, question is, it's time to start the backup to see what we have there. No, no, it's not a KJ problem. You think Criswell can do better with the, with the offensive line getting smoked and getting sacked? Like, no. Doesn't matter who's back there. Matt Jones could be back there and he'd still be finding, like, he'd still be getting hit. Uh, I don't even know how to say your name. I don't even try. But Bryles, he gave uh, KJ only one option. Too many options kills KJ, KJ. Who's the idiot now? No, see, that's, that's, I don't, I don't agree with that. I don't agree with that at all. Like, I, you know, the idea of uh, KJ only had one option, I, I don't think that that's the case. Like, I know that there's that offense that kind of runs through as far as how, you know, who you throw it to and how you throw it and look for your check downs and everything. But, uh, yeah, like, I, I think that people who are, off, like, people, any, anybody, I'm sorry, anybody that's coming after KJ and this thing needs to, like, I don't know, like, what you're talking about. This is not a KJ Jefferson problem. I'm not saying he's perfect, but he, this is not a KJ Jefferson problem. Like that, that's dumb. Charles says, uh, how many wins do we have left in this season? Man, man. Uh, let's see. Let me go. Let me open up the schedule. Let's see what we're looking at here. Ole Miss is a loss this weekend. I believe. After that win against LSU, dude, that offense. Whew. LSU, man, it's just a, yeah, I, I think they, I think that they lose that one. They lose to Bama. Mississippi State, it's possible. Possible. Unless, unless, you know, they've lost the team or something like that, but possible. Florida is still like, they're not very good. So that one's possible. Auburn, <laughs> why on me? Auburn is not great, but they did give Georgia a run, but it's at home. That one's a 50-50. I'd probably lean towards Auburn just because of how the season may go at that one. FIU, you should win in Missouri. The Missouri looks actually pretty decent at this point, but they haven't really played the schedule that they need to, so we'll see how that plays out. But, I mean, if you're wanting me to say, like, how many wins am I, am I picking right now straight up? i say Arkansas, what, two? I'd say two wins more that I feel good about saying that they're going to win. But nothing else. Let's see, uh... Bumble says, going into Ole Miss after the whooping they put on LSU, I guess he is getting embarrassed again. It could happen. It could happen. Maximus says, do not uh, do feel bad for KJ. This was supposed to be the year we contend for the SEC West. Now I hope that KJ can land any sort of role in the NFL. He deserves the best. That's how I am, man. I love KJ Jefferson. There will be no KJ Jefferson slander in this podcast or on this stream or ever. I'm not saying he's the best quarterback of all time. I'm not even saying he's the, like, the greatest quarterback to ever walk the face of the earth at Arkansas. But to, to act like like KJ Jefferson is a problem is absurd and it's dumb. Like I, I, I am, I am going to like entertain that whole thing. Thomas says this year reminds me of the 2012 year with Tyler Wilson, John L. Smith, where we had the talent and wasn't utilized and went four and eight. If we go four and eight. Do you think it's, uh, Pittman would be allowed to stay another year? No. Now I don't know what your check would do, but if it's, if you're asking me, no, if Sam Pittman goes four and eight this year, you got to go, you got to go. That cannot happen. Not in year four. You can't regress that much in three straight years. You cannot do that. Uh, Bill says, level went downhill after receiving vet. I don't know what you're trying to say there, my man. Uh, JV on Brown says, make John offensive coordinator. Yeah, please do. I'm sure I do great. I, listen, if I don't know if... Uh, Actually, I do know. I know I would suck at it because obviously we all would. Let's be honest. We'd all suck at being an offensive coordinator. But if I, if you said, hey, John, with this team and KJ Jefferson, fourth and short, what, what should we run? I'm like, everyone bunch up and just you, you get behind KJ and you push. And then boom, there's a first down. I could do that one. I could do that one play. I could do that. Uh, let's see. Matt says, we match up well against Ole Miss. If he knows... We'll stick to what works. We'll walk out there with a victory. The only way Arkansas is going to win that game is in a shootout. And with the way that Arkansas's offense has looked so far, I was, does anybody feel good about that? I mean, it, I think they'll score points. But it's, it just ain't going to do it. Ain't going to do it for me. That game's at 6 o'clock, too. And Ole Miss is flying high right now. Maybe they have an emotional letdown. We know that Arkansas game against with Ole Miss is always weird. You know, Ole Miss is one of the few teams that Arkansas has had pretty consistent success against in the past decade, but 
man, I, I, I don't, I mean, it's, I'm not banking on it. I'm not going to bet on it. Glenn says, do you think KJ uses his COVID year to come back one more season? Because I'm sure he is disappointed too. I don't know. I don't know. It'd be nice, but I don't know what the program is going to look like next year. Like a year from now, who's, who's to say what it's going to look like? You can have a completely new coach, coaching staff, new roster. Don't know. Hmm. Let's see. Vince says, uh, this season explains why I wasn't sold on Sam Penn from day one, and I thought we needed a big-time hire. If we don't get one, we will be the Vanderbilt of the SEC this year. Again, that's just that's loser talk, man. Like, you can believe that, but that's loser talk. And, and, and big name, who'd you want to get? And anybody that says Deion Sanders can like, get bent, come on. None of you would have wanted to hire Deion Sanders back in 2019. None of you. And if you did, if you say you did, you're lying. Yeah, now, because it's hindsight, and he looks like he's doing a good job with Colorado, but don't act like, I wanted Prime the whole time. None of you did. So don't even act, act like that. Uh, Thomas says, do you think we have the best offensive skill position players we've had since 2008 to 13? I, mean, I don't know. That's tough. I, I think that you definitely have a case for one of the best, because I think Rocket Sanders is still the, one of the best, if not the best, SEC running back. KJ's a great, great quarterback. I mean, you got a combination there alone that's worth looking at. And the, and the wide receivers are good. Don't get me wrong. They're good. It's just we haven't seen them showcase maybe like they should be because of the offensive problems. But, I mean, I, I think that – I think 2021 and, – and I'm not taking anything away from Pittman or KJ or anybody, but 2021 to me was just the, the trail and Burks year. When you have a player like that, like a – Traylon Burks, a Darren McFadden, a Ryan Mallett, um, you know, just like those game-changing next-level talents, generational talents that every time they step on the field, they're the best player on the field no matter what. Whenever you have those players, that is always going to make you, like, take a, a big step forward in, in the season. But, yeah, I've, 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 I feel like that was such a, he was such a huge part of that season. And the success of that year. And the defense was pretty solid. It wasn't perfect, but it was solid. Um, Steven says, why would KJ come back to this as show and some of these insane fans? I mean, he came back this past year. Why wouldn't he? Like, who's to say, like, I don't know any, anyone, like, like, that, again, you can't take it to that level of being like, oh, it's all, you know, it's we need to change for KJ. Like, it, like, Anyone that thinks that just bringing in Criswell is going to fix any sort of problem whatsoever, you're kidding yourselves. Gowak says, dang, I'm late. Sorry if you've discussed it, but I think if we don't make a bowl. Sam gets another year, but Enos and Kennedy got to go unless something changes. Like, I, go Hogs. I am i don't even agree with that. I think if Sam Pittman makes a, uh, doesn't make a bowl game, then he needs to go. Sean says, you're literally calling for Sam Pittman's head. No, I'm not. No, I'm not. I'm say, I said from the beginning, from the get-go, that if Sam Pittman did not make a bowl game this season – then there needed to be a change. And he still has time to make a bowl game. I don't feel good about it. I don't know anyone that feels good about it. But if Sam Pittman doesn't make a bowl game this year, then there needs to be a change. So I'm not calling for his head. But I'm not sitting here saying that, hey, this is why it's going to be okay. Come on now. Powerbacker says, I'm having a fantasy that I clap my hands when we have the offensive line that we had back when Pittman was our offensive coordinator. Well, he's never your offensive coordinator was the offensive line coach. But yeah, I think that that was, you know, looking back on it, that was the biggest thing that made that cage, uh, that Dan Eno's offense work so well is he had an elite offensive line to block and hold blocks as long as they needed to, um, as long as they needed to per develop the plays itself. So I got over 200 watchers on this thing. Appreciate everybody. Be sure to subscribe to the Locked On Razor X uh, podcast here on YouTube. Just got about five minutes here though, folks. So, uh, again, I'm trying to get to all the comments that I possibly can. Uh, Tyler says, I wonder if he would potentially come back another year just to improve how he places in the draft or talking about KJ to prove. Yeah. I mean, that, there's a, there's a possibility, but again, we just don't know, you know, if Sam Pim is still the coach, is it somebody else? If so, who is it? Like, there's a lot of things that are, are going on. Dalton says no more hiring buddies of the donors. Get someone that will put boots or butts, put boots and butts and butts and seats. I heard that one before. Winning is the uh, only talking a coach has to do to get a fan base to like them. Yeah. No, I think everybody's happy with that. Everybody's happy with that. If they just win, who cares how they win? But um, 
Who's buddies with donors? I don't know. I guess I didn't think Sam Pim was necessarily buddies with donors. Not saying he doesn't have friends that are donors, but I didn't see that the case. Let's see. Cox says if they do fire Sam, do they get somebody from another school like a coordinator? Or do they go after someone like Dan Mullen? I have no idea. I have no idea. Matt says Sam, Sam stays, Eno stays, Kennedy goes, and we reload for another go. I mean, I don't know, dude. I don't know. It, again, it depends on what happens the rest of the year. If they go to a bowl, say if they go six and six, okay. I'll always go with you on that. Maybe make some changes in the, in the offensive uh, team side of things and give us, and give him another year. But I'm sorry, I don't accept less than six wins this year in year four with KJ Jefferson and Rocket Sanders. I, I'm sorry especially the SEC West looking as wide open as it's ever been. I don't accept that, and neither should you. Uh, let's see. David says, two games in the same fourth and one play called. Every team knows that they're going to cover Rocket and KJ. Poor coaching and play calling from what I'm seeing. That's been a problem. That's where I'm at. That's where I'm at. Chase says, if Pittman gets fired, do you think he'll still retire to Hot Springs? Yeah, I, I do. And, I mean, again, it's like, I'm going to keep saying this because everyone thinks that, I, or some people, I should say, and I'm like, I'm going for Sam Pittman's head right now. I'm not. I just, I've always said from the get-go that if he doesn't make a bowl game this year, there needs to be a change. But if that happens, like, one thing that I, and I will be a positive person here on this Razorback devotional about Sam Pittman in this regard, that if it got to that point and then Sam Pittman was told that, hey, they're going to go in a different direction, I don't know if it'd be Sam Pittman got fired and maybe like he, he resigns because I think Hunter Yurichek would, would give him that. But here's the deal. Sam Pittman will be a man of his word. This will be his final job and he'll retire and he'll do great and he'll be happy but he'll also be devastated. Not because he got fired, but the devastated in the fact that he did not do the job that he was hoping to do at Arkansas. And I think that that's something that you got to give him some, some respect for. It's not like he's just going to be like, hey, I got my money. I'm going to go somewhere else like some of these other coaches that got fired. Like He will actually be devastated, not that he got fired or that he got embarrassed, but in fact that he let everybody down. Because that's the type of guy. If we do get rid of Sam, do you give Bobby P another shot? Absolutely not. No, that's not even a thing to talk about. Sam, uh, Bobby Trino's not coming back. It's not happening. Nor do I want him. As much as I love that, and I love the Trino more than anybody, but he's not coming back. We do get a new head coach. I truly think it needs to be established OC or DC with head coaching experience or someone at the FBS that is established, not like Morris or someone below the 500 percentage. I mean, we could sit here and talk about all day long who we want to hire and everything, but the thing is, Sam Pimmons still the coach right now. In fact, we can end on this one. Again, appreciate your comments, but here's the deal. Sam Pittman is still the head football coach right now. He's not getting fired in the middle of the year, nor does he need to or deserve to. I'm not going to ever call for that. He's got, at this point in time, seven games left. He's two and three. It's bad. It's bad. It looks bad. This team's not playing well. They could lose the team. It could be a bad deal all around, 100%. But let's be real about this, folks, and let's be very clear about this. If it doesn't work out, and if he doesn't go to a bowl game or whatever, and they decide to move on, then let's start having the discussion of who do you hire, who do you look at, who do you do all that. But right now, none of it matters. None of it matters right now. Now, Yurchek, I think he's a fine athletic director. I love Hunter Yurchek. He's done a fantastic job. And every hire that he's made, I have been a big fan of, and for the most part has worked out. But this is the case where we're going to find out exactly where your check is going to go. Cause he's always said that when it comes to coaches, he's always got a list. He's got a list of guys that he think that he knows would be great here, that he feels like would be great here. And then he'll contact him if it ever gets to that point. It hasn't yet, but when it does, let's have that discussion. But I trust Hunter, your check to do the right thing. I, I trust him to see how it plays out and how this season goes. And then make a very educated decision on when this year comes to an end and what to do moving forward. If he decides to keep Sam Pittman, I want to hear reasoning of like and everything as far as how it goes. If there ends up being a losing season this year, I want to know more. Uh, but if he again, if I feel like if Sam Pittman goes six and six this year, he'll get another year and he deserves another year. Now he's on the hottest of hot seats, but if he goes to a uh, if he goes to a bowl game, then yeah, I think he deserves to to get a, get another year. But five and seven can't have it, won't have it. Need to move on. So I trust in Hunter Yurichek, and I still think. For all intents and purposes, because this has been a fire and brimstone type of a Razorback devotional, I still believe that Sam Pittman 
with all of his flaws and all the issues that people have, which are justifiable, I get it. But Sam Pittman can still have this opportunity to right this ship. His time's running out. But he can have time, and he can be a guy that finds a way to make it work. It's happened before. Maybe he proves us all wrong. Maybe he would, uh, maybe he would, uh, you know, make me look like an idiot, and that's fine. I'd love it if he makes me look like an idiot. I love being made to look like an idiot when I'm wrong about being terrible. Like it's awesome. I enjoy it. But I'm going to give credit where credit is due. And uh, uh, one other thing that uh, I want to say too before we go is I had people coming at me on social media about. Uh, you know, whether like, you know, whether I'm just a, a homer or, or a fanboy or whatever that means and everything. I've said this before and I'll say it again in these things. I am always going to be somebody who is a fan of the school, not a fan of the coach. I don't, I don't raw, raw coaches because of, oh, well, I just love them so much and I, I'm friends with them or anything like that. I'm not friends with any coaches and I've always felt like I don't need to be friends. I'm cordial, but it's like, I want to be able to say, hey, when it's great, let's be great. When it's bad, let's be bad. But also when we need to be patient, let's be patient. But when it's time to make a move, let's make a move. Because I want what's best for the University of Arkansas, just like you all do. We're all fans, man. We want to win. We want to be successful. We want to be great. So it makes us Razorback fans. We have passion. We, we want every single sport to be great. But at times, we have to be able to look at it through the realistic lens of what the program's capable of, but also what the situation in Arkansas finds themselves in. If things are get bad enough, I've, I've laid it out for you. I laid it out of exactly how I feel about how this, this season goes a certain way, how it needs to end. But there's time. It's time to turn it around. It's time to get better. Let's see. We'll see what this team can do after really being demoralized at the bottom right now, completely and totally. How do they respond? How do they respond? How do they get moving forward? How do they get back on track? If they go over to Oxford and just get the doors blown off of them, I think that's going to be a telltale sign of what the rest of the year is going to be like. But let's see. But it's not good. I am not happy. It's my birthday week after all. I was like, I was going to go to Ole Miss. I'm probably not going to anymore. Oh, and Talon says, uh, happy birthday, Rowdy. Yeah, happy birthday, Rowdy. He's actually uh, sitting here right next to me. He's six years old. Man. It's getting old up there. Was that in his dog years, like his 50s or something? I don't really know. But uh, okay, we went a long time. Everybody, thank you so much for watching this and listening to this. Appreciate all your comments. Like this has been awesome. I want to do this every single time after every game. We'll do it again uh, uh, against uh, Ole Miss. And I like waiting a day after. Like I love Trey Biddy's walk and talk. Oh, I keep sending me. I love Trey Biddy's walk and talk. I, I feel like that's one of the coolest things that anybody does. I'm almost jealous that he does such a good job of it because it's like, man, that's such a good thing. And I, and I enjoy watching it and everything, and he does a great job with it because uh, he gives a raw, emotional reaction as soon as the game's over, and it's very fitting, and I love it. Uh, but that's why I wait until Sunday, too. That all right, let's talk about it after sleeping it off, after having a full day, after uh, you know we're, we're able to process it all. Let's look at it as a, as, as in a different light, in a different point of view that doesn't get over-emotional, that doesn't get over the top, that doesn't just you know want to put a flamethrower to the entire program. Let's look at it logically and reasonably. And listen, you have your opinion. I have mine. We're going to have fun with it. And that's what this is all about. But let's see how it plays out. Appreciate everybody listening in. Be sure to like and subscribe to the podcast. All you folks who watched, be sure to subscribe to the YouTube page here on the Locked on Razorbacks YouTube page. And uh, we're going to keep having uh, some great content, some great podcasts coming up this week. So subscribe. However you need to subscribe, let's keep having some fun. It'll all be all right, folks. It'll all be okay. We'll get it done. We'll have a good time. We're Razorback fans, right? We're resilient. There's nothing too bad for us. Nothing we can't take. We've been hurt so much before. What's some more hurt to us, right? I don't know. I can't even say that right. But anyways, appreciate everybody listening in, watching in. Have a great rest of your week, folks. We'll see you tomorrow on the podcast for Locked On Razorbacks.